Welcome back to Bunny and Me. This is Bunny and I, Me, and today is September 3rd. Throughout much of history, we have developed a vision of government and politics that looks a little bit like this. A group of dignified, middle-aged white men with poofs and quaffs and the very occasional beer belly sitting around a table signing papers and amicably discussing policy changes that the populace support and agree to. This is an image we've perpetuated through paintings, history books, and flowery speeches, but human history and opinion is nothing if not divisive and indecisive. If we were to go on an excellent adventure through this day in history, we would see the subjects of the British Empire losing their shit over the adoption of the Gregorian calendar, which took place in 1752. People took to the streets and rioted, thinking that the government had gone out of its way to steal 11 days of their lives. And you can easily believe that this happened, because we've all seen the horror of facing down a mother of three at 5 a.m. on Black Friday when there's only one Tickle Me Elmo left on the shelves, and we love to convince ourselves that we are way more civilized than our historical counterparts. However, the History and Heritage Accommodation Guide claims that the calendar riots were the Georgian equivalent of an urban myth. And although many people thought that the government had decided to shorten everyone's lives by 11 days, no one voiced their concerns through riots. Mies got to say that as a New Englander, the riots were probably the more believable story to tell, especially considering the way Bostonians act when they're happy about something, i.e. the Red Sox winning the World Series. Moving forward 31 years on this day in 1783, and this is a spoiler alert for anyone who slept through American history class or is unfamiliar with the musical Hamilton, the American Revolutionary War officially ended with the signing of the Treaty of Paris, which ultimately recognized American independence. That's right, we are no longer British subjects, so go USA, no taxation without representation, except that's not exactly true. It's just that the tables are turned. The United States now exercises taxation without representation with its own territories in a way that is reminiscent of Britain's former hold over the American colonies. Puerto Rico, for example, is represented by a single resident commissioner who is allowed to speak in Congress and serve on committees, but is not allowed to vote despite the fact that Puerto Rico does pay taxes. This is a classic example of history repeating itself, just like how Boston reacted to the Patriots winning the Super Bowl. Well, that doesn't remind you of anything, does it? Ultimately, what we're saying is that history has a tendency to repeat itself, in part because humans tend to have a weird and sometimes simplistic reaction to things. We've been caught rioting over the loss of arbitrary calendar days and in celebration of game-winning pitches and passes, but failed to tip our hats to people who quietly sit down at sporting events or on a bus, peacefully promoting social change. And finally, scientists are starting to catch on to the patterns in our practices. Researchers funded in part by NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center and the University of Maryland College Park have developed a statistical framework for pinpointing early warning signals of impending population collapse. Their model, called Human and Nature Dy Dynamics, or HANDY, works on the principle of the balance of nature. The balance of nature basically states that if Bunny goes out and gets himself some bunny to love and makes lots of little bunnies, a predator like the dog Butter can eat lots of bunnies and make lots of butters. But when the butters eat all the bunnies, they die off from famine and the population of butters declines and the cycle starts over again. The Handy Formula takes this cycle of resources into account as one of its four factors influencing social collapse. Nature and, nat nature and natural resources, the, the accumulation of wealth, the elite, and the commoners. The researchers were able to analyze three templates for society. Egalitarian society, meaning a society without a top 1%. Equitable society, which includes worker ants and non-worker ants like students and retirees. And unequal society with the Gates, Bloombergs, and Kochs at the very top. The research suggests that this last type of society, which overexploits natural resources and encourages uneven distribution of wealth, was the most susceptible to collapse. In other words, today's Western society is most comparable to the Roman Empire, ancient Sumerian and Babylonian civilizations, and the Khmer Empire, just to name a few, and all of these civilizations crashed and burned harder than most Pinterest fails. The researchers warn that if we do not make significant changes, either by redistributing wealth or by making technological advancements that significantly reduce consumption of natural resources, our society will also fall and all that will be left for the archaeologists of the future to study will be penis necklaces and the dong graffiti that other students used to draw on my homework. 
And we know that this is all that will be left, because dick pics are some of the most lasting iconography left behind by the ancients. If you want to read more about this or about the study, you'll be able to find links in the description below. We really do recommend you do, because both stories are actually really interesting. But of course, even if you do read more about the study, we humans are, an, are excellent at ignoring incontrovertible evidence, so we'll probably follow the historic example of every guy who's ever said, there's no such thing as global warming, just look at all the snow, and ignore these researchers just like we've ignored Al Gore for the last 11 years. Just look at how we managed to ignore those 11 lost calendar days. That's all from your host, Bunny and me. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Hope you learned something, and happy September 3rd.